Hi guys, welcome back to Shah Horology. My name is Shah. This is a new series of videos where I'll be sitting down with my friends, talking watches, looking at their collection and maybe just general news on the watch business. This is Abdul Rahman. He's a good friend of mine. He's a watch collector and he's really passionate about the Daytonas. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Watches are my passion and you know, you can say I'm a watchaholic. <laughs> yeah, you and me both. So you've chosen to talk about the Daytona today. Uh, we'll, uh, this is ab absolutely iconic watch, but it didn't really have a good start, you know, in life, as they say. Yeah, you know, absolutely. there wasn't much uh, demand for it in the beginning. And then as time has gone on and nowadays, obviously it's like one of the most vintage wa watches. Exactly. So you've, we're going to talk about four of the references yes, from the range. 6241, yep. 16520, and yep. 116520, and 116500. Yep. And um, it depends to you where you want us to start. I, I think we should start at where the story starts. Yep. So right at the beginning. Yeah. So let's so go for the first one. Yeah. 6241. Yep. Um, it's actually established in uh, 1965 till 1969. Yeah. Um, yeah. As you can see, the uh, bezel made of bakelite. Do you know what's the bakelite? Yeah, bakelite basically it's a black plastic, right? Yeah, yeah, is, yeah, um, yeah. And the caliber, um, the caliber is 722. Yep, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's uh, called Paul Newman Panda Dive. Yeah, yeah. This one so, has the plexiglass, there's no sapphire glass here. No. Right? And uh, 37 mm dial size. Exactly. And we've got the stretchable bracelet. Stretchable. So truly, truly an amazing piece. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, I know it's an honor for you to yeah, own it, exactly. but it's, it's an honor for me to just to be able to be so close to it, you know? Yeah. And you know, this, uh, this watch is like, as, I love it as much as I love my kids. <laughs> Are you sure? Yes. Are you sure that's not going too far? No. <laughs> okay, so from there, where did Rolex go? Um, then uh, Rolex went to the uh, reference 16520. Okay, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, like you can say uh, 40 mm dimension. Yeah, yeah. So it went from 37 of the original yes. to the 40 uh, of the Mark II, the exactly. second second yeah. one. The second generation. You yeah, have yeah, this. yeah. And it, uh, it becomes in white dial and black dial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, and the crown is. Uh, Cool yeah, so this is this is one of the changes from the original. The the buttons are not, are not just pushed down; they yeah, screw down. Yeah, screw down. And you also have the crown guards, yeah, which crown were not guards. present in the other exactly. one. And even you can mention that um, uh, this collapse is different than the previous one. Yeah, yeah, sure. The bracelet is uh, you know a lot uh, uh, polished in the middle, and it's obviously a different sort of design where is, is, there's a lock on it. And, and I also uh, have, uh, I also have the uh, Patrizi dial. Do you know what's the Patrizi dial? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do know the Patrizi dial. So basically, on on the black ones uh, in '94 and '95, 1994 and '95, they used a certain lacquer which was organic. Yes. And uh, what they didn't realize at that time was it didn't provide enough protection. Yes. So over time, when the watches are exposed to UV light, the sub dials have changed color, they've gone darker. Exactly, yes. And uh, what's uh, unique about it is that each dial will, uh, you know, be a different, slightly different color yeah. because depending on how much exposure they've had. Yes, and that's why I'm very interested and um, honored to have this Patrizi dial. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. It's collectible. Very collectible, yes, right? Collectible, yes. Yeah. And yeah. they also have something called inverted dial. Okay, yeah, yeah, where the six looks like a nine on the sub dial right i think they have made a mistake yeah 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 also obviously you know this one is the where they used the zenith el primero right el primero movement, yeah yes. but and they uh, have done some modification to fit into yeah yeah i think they all together they changed 200 parts yes exactly. so and it took them about two years you know of work before they were happy with it exactly. they had to take the date away so yeah the, this is the one that really where the Daytona started climbing, yes. you know, this, this started becoming more popular. Exactly. This poor thing spent 25 years where nobody wanted it. Exactly. And then from here, it started rising. So, 
so from the what you can say is Mark II, the second version, uh, where did Rolex go? Uh, actually, Rolex uh, go to the 116520. Yep. Um, Rolex introduced this uh, at uh, Basel World Fair. Yeah. Uh, 2000. Right. And, right. Uh, actually, this Ro this is uh, Rolex's first completely new in-house movement. Okay. In over yep. 50 years. Right, a right. fully integrated self-winding cosmograph yep. for the Daytona. Yeah. The yeah. caliber code is 4130. That four one, the 4130, that's correct. Four one yeah, three sorry, yeah. And yeah. it has 72 hours of power Z. Yeah. This is the caliber 4030, which is uh, 54 hours. And yeah. Actually, 4030 belongs to 16520. I didn't mention that earlier. Yeah, but that's yeah. right. Yeah, you're right in that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they changed that. They, they, were some, they also brought in some other changes. The, the subdials, uh, they moved the position of the second subdial. The clasp is different. You know, they, they changed that. Uh, of course, the big one is the movement is completely different. It's completely in-house. Yeah, it, uh, there, there's, there's quite a, few, quite, a, quite a few changes. The hour markers, to me, seem a bit bigger. So, you know, still, uh, you know, still they, they, just, they just kept making it more beautiful, didn't they? Yes. And yeah, obviously the popularity yeah. kept going up and up and up. And they are still on, on track with white and black dyes only. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're still only offering the white and black in uh, the previous generation and even in this generation. So yeah. from the third generation, we move on to the fourth or the what we can say is the latest, latest, latest generation, generation, right? Yeah. And which called 116500. Uh, yep, yep. Uh, actually, it's similar to the uh, previous model, but yep. it has the ceramic bezel. Yeah, so yeah. basically so underneath the hood, you can say, the, these are exactly the same watches. You have the ceramic bezel, bezel on the new one, yeah. but the caliber 4130 is the same. The case is 40 and mm. they have made one uh, also different than the previous on white dial. Yeah. They have made the panda dial. Okay. Yeah. 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 On the white, the, the it's a panda dial. Yes. Right. It's right. very okay. popular and it's very difficult to get now. Yeah. 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 If you yeah. see yeah. other agencies, I think to request that uh, panda Daytona, you need at least six years of waiting list. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So is the white dial, more, the panda, more popular than the, just the black? Yes. Right, right, yeah, yeah. Both are beautiful, but yeah. the panda has more demand. Right, right, okay, okay. Apart from that, I think the, the bracelets are the same, the, the case dimensions, size, yeah. the dimensions are the same, aren't they? Yes, and exactly. uh, it's just the, the biggest one is the, the fact that it's a ceramic bezel, right? Yeah. Yeah. So this is the four generations of the Daytona as it stands, starting from the, the main and the main original, the 6241, to the 162520, the 116520, and then the latest 116500. Thank you guys for watching. This is episode number one. We're obviously still learning. So shall if we, we say, shall we say what we have next? No, no, we'll, we'll, we'll uh, reserve that for later. Sure. I just want to say if we've made any mistakes, uh, it, please like correct it. us. And you know, we're always wanting to learn more. So, and if you have any suggestions for the channel or if you have any comments, please leave them in the comment section below. Uh, once again, thank you so much. Thank you for your support and we'll see you in episode two. Thank you very much. <laughs>